Mr. Attorney General, allow me to interrupt. I must admit a degree of befuddlement about this controversy because we're always saying that America needs to have a conversation about race, and the minute you bring it up, people seem to want to say, no, we should have a conversation except when white elected officials bring it up. The fact of the matter is that race is a factor in Maryland politics. Tom and I would probably talk about it. The past two governors of Maryland have both had black lieutenant governors, and that's obviously no coincidence. You apparently dared to talk about race openly to a group of volunteers. Are you surprised by the controversy it's generated? I can tell you that all of our phone lines are lit up right now in ways that they have not been lit up with any other issue in Maryland that we've discussed. But are you surprised by the controversy it's generated? Um, not really. I mean, look, I think race should always be discussed, and, and, and we shouldn't hide it. We should embrace it, and we should embrace the diversity that behind the whole race issue. But I do think a campaign for governor should be um, – focused on, you know, more of the ideas uh, that, that people present, the vision for the future. And the reason why it's particularly relevant in Maryland is because we do have a, a, a population that's 29.5 percent African American, uh, and, and we, we have a lot of minority people that live in Maryland that are actually are not African American. And, you know, we've done a lot of, we have a lot of issues. Look, we have the number two minority achievement gap in the whole United States in Maryland. And most people don't realize that, but that's a big problem we have. We, we're losing jobs all the time in Maryland. You know, I personally, through our Attorney General Mortgage Foreclosure Settlement, uh, I've worked with the other attorneys in the country to put in $1.4 billion into keeping folks in their homes that are either underwater or are about to be foreclosed upon. So uh, should we be talking about race? Yes, but we should be talking about the, the positive thing and try and get to a place where it's not the factor but maybe a consideration and part of the diversity that we're all trying to do. And, and, the, and the lieutenant governor, uh, in fact, is running on what he says is his record, which he thinks is a sterling record, and that he's not running as a racial candidate. He, I think he told me he would be proud to be the first African-American governor of the state, but he says he's running on a record, a demonstrable record that you can debate him about. Well, and I look forward to that debate. That's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about our record versus his record, not somebody else's record. I want to talk about our vision for the state of Maryland and his vision for the state of Maryland and let the voters make that decision. We shouldn't be caught up in this political theater of apologies and sort of, well, we should apologize for this, but, well, maybe you didn't say anything inappropriate about race, so you should now apologize about, you know, disrespecting his veteran service, which, of course, we weren't talking about anybody's veteran service. We're talking to campaign workers about going out and knocking on doors. You mentioned illegally taped, and earlier in the conversation, I thought I heard you mention the word wiretapping. What did you mean by that? Well, Maryland is one of 12 states. Remember the Linda Tripp controversy? Maryland's one of the 12 states that you need to give a, a two-way consent for to tape somebody. So you can't just walk up to somebody and have a conversation uh, and be taping without saying. And that, actually, most news organizations, when you do a, a taped radio interview, they will tell you, you, you we are going to be taping this conversation because in Maryland we ha- you have to have a two-way consent. So what happened here was they sent in one of their volunteers to tape this private meeting with campaign workers uh, and without getting consent and then sent that tape to the Washington Post. That's actually a five-year felony in our state. Of course, many people have been spending, well, you, you, that should be you know, prosecuted and this and that. I, I, I'm above that stuff. I, but I, is I, it clear I, that you said they sent it in? Are you, are you, did, have you, has it been said well, definitively but, that the Browns people sent in the person to tape it? Well, everybody else there was. Uh, well, first of all, do you know who did it? Do you actually know the indiv- Do you know the we, person? We have a, a very good idea of, of who did it because it was a small, you know, small meeting. Many, most, it was a, a large majority of the people there were. Well, everyone was there for the Anne Arundel County. Uh, there was a huge portion of that meeting that were actually African Americans and other minorities because that's who uh, our our campaign is appealing to. Uh, we know the two or three people that were not invited and everybody sort of thought well they must have been brought by somebody else and so no one sort of questioned it and nobody's going to think that a felony is going to be committed there so nobody cared but that all said even as it may the tape was made and there was nothing inappropriate or inaccurate set on the tape and we we're talking about the specific accusation is that i injected race by saying not to talk about race which is one of the great ironies of this uh of, of this discussion 